Hey everybody, what's up? So Java Garrett's here. If you don't know who I am, I am just a high school dropout trying to make it grind, uh, starting to grind on uh, YouTube and get get some content out. See where this really goes. Today's video, I wanna, I I, I wanna, I was gonna do a couple things, but then it just kind of hit me while I was watching another video that I need to make a video for the audience that I wanna, I wanna target, and the the target audience I really wanna um, speak to are people in need in America, essentially uh, poor people. Dis, uh, disenfranch disenfranchised people. So I think one of the good ways to get that started would be to uh, kind of tell my story. And um, hopefully it's just a, it's maybe a, a way to inspire, I guess, is a good way to put it, to let you know that it's not over. You have a chance. Uh, I see in the news and the headlines all the time that the, like people younger than me, I'm 31, uh, people younger than me, uh, they're never going to be homeowners. They don't have freedom. They don't have their paycheck to paycheck. They have tens of thousands of dollars in debt, 50,000, whatever, you know, a massive amount of debts and they can't afford to live anywhere. So, I mean, kind of, I don't really know how to frame this. I'm kind of just firing from the hip. So bear with me a second here, please. Um, so if we begin my story, I, uh, was born in a city, a little suburb and I was, uh, I was born in a suburb and my early life, I was, uh, I didn't really have any friends really. I had you know, I lived in a suburb and I was really into video games and my brothers and stuff like that. And just kind of your stereotypical um, suburban kid. I mean, we weren't wealthy. We weren't even like we were the bottom of the suburbs. So, I mean, like I've never been like I'm not saying like suburb like uh, my parents. They made decent money, I think. But I don't know. Like we always seemed like we were always on our like our last check. It always, always there was never a place of security in my life financially. So then <clears throat> and I, hit, I hit about third grade. And we get pulled out of uh, school, elementary school, to be homeschooled. And I didn't understand why, but whatever. Um, I had trouble with the school I was at anyway, so I wasn't really, like, pushing back on that. And then we we, we, we kind of did that. But what I kind of think happened now is that my parents used that as a, um, a time off where they didn't have to really keep us in line, keep us in routine to go through like a daily school or make sure we had lunches or lunch money or stuff like that. I'm pretty sure. And then use us to, uh, get help, get the house ready for, um, the next adventure in my life, which is my, my parents just kind of pulled the rug on us, sold our house in a little suburb land to go buy a farm in the uh, sticks. So we moved from a town, not a big town, but it was a suburb right outside of a big city, a bigger city. And we go to a uh, farm town with like a thousand people. Uh, my graduating class was like, my class was 50, 52 people, I believe. I don't remember off the top of my head. So we go to this farm. I'm a skinny little pipsqueak uh, gamer kid. And I got to do stuff like bale hay. I couldn't even lift a hay bale. And we had to, I sent not to really drag through this uh, time so long, but I was, uh, I, was a, I was just a farm hand for until I was about 19 years old. So it was everything from fencing to trenching to whatever. And we kind of like, I always explained it to people as we were like bad Amish. We couldn't afford equipment. We had about 200 acres. We couldn't afford equipment. And we ran beef cattle, horses, chickens, uh, ducks, had like 30 cats and like five dogs and all the, all this crap. And um, we couldn't really afford equipment. So we were doing everything like digging fence posts by hand. And it was always, always rocks everywhere. Uh, we couldn't, our, our driveway was about a mile long uphill and we couldn't really afford to buy gravel. There was a creek that went through the bottom of our driveway that would get washed out every spring. And it would, we would, one of our jobs was to ride in the back of a, a wagon of the tractor. We finally we were able to get and repair or um, refurbish enough that we could drive it uh, a lot or a decent amount. Uh, never could use power equipment. That was uh, way, always way too dangerous, but, but um uh, we could, we could always, we could always work backbreaking work. So we'd have to pick these stones up, put them in a pile and then like smash them into little pieces. And that's how we got our gravel for the driveway and stuff like that. Like long days, sun up till sundown, whatever, feeding calves before we were expected to go to school, getting pulled out of school a lot to go chase cattle. Cause they broke through fence. And, um, we were kind of, we were outsiders. We went to a small community and we were outsiders and, um, not to like race bait or anything like that but my brother is black so like we went to a smaller town and they it seemed i don't want to like accuse the city i'm from of this but it seemed that they were like it was pretty it seemed pretty odd anyway like and i'm not i mean i'm, I'm not a i i had problems you know what i mean like i wasn't like a perfect child either i'm not I'm not trying to say that but we were very obviously outsiders we were poor whatever you know we were different we were poor and different and we were from the area. It was one of those towns that had like everybody had names and stuff like that. So we were outsiders. So I didn't really have any support, you know, 
and I kind of like rebelled a bit and wasn't doing well in high school or school or whatever, you know, got the fed, the whole, um, the whole talk about, you know, you need to get really good grades. You're so gifted, bro. What are you doing? You're throwing away your future. If you don't get a high school or, you know, so I've said this a million times, you don't get a high school diploma. You can't get a job at Hardee's. If you can't get a job at Hardee's and it doesn't even matter if you get a job at Hardee's because it's not gonna be enough to pay your bills. So then you might as well just like not even go on living. Uh, you need to, and not only do you need to get good grades, you need to get the best grades. You need to be the best to even get grants because you're poor or whatever. Uh, you might not be able to afford college, so you're need to, you're going to need to be essentially the valedictorian and become the best and be the best and get this college degree and, blah, 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 and all that crap. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, I'm sure everybody and their moms heard this from like their own school is like school system. I'm pretty sure that's just kind of the norm of uh, the school system, but I don't really know technically. So I uh, I discover marijuana. And I start uh, smoking the smoking the reefer and playing Halo. And you know, I couldn't really hang out with my friends either. My mom, my parents were very um, strict on when it came like uh, what they didn't really let us out of the house until uh, mid teenager or whatever. And also, I wet the bed till I was thirteen, so that made it very extremely difficult for me to build social relationships at school. Um, anyway, <laughs> man, that's super embarrassing. I don't know why I just said that. Whatever. I, I guess it, I guess it plays into my story. But anyway, really awkward. Angsty, angsty, is that the word? Teen. School doesn't like me. I try to play sports, but I was never really pa passing classes long enough to whatever. And like, it was one of those things where the coach, I didn't realize this until I was later, but obviously the coach is going to play the favored. We were very competitive as well. So if you weren't already like top tier athlete of our division, um, you were not played. You needed to, um, there wasn't very much of like participation. It wasn't one of those school things where, we were in a low division too, and they weren't very keen on um, letting everybody play an equal amount of time, like to, to really build the students up. They wanted to win things, win, win, and win, win everything. Uh, very elite school. Very, the school too was very uh, not modern <laughs> by today's standards. I see like the culture is a lot more normal with uh, hookup culture and drugs and partying and stuff like that and TikTok and like whatever, all that other stuff. I mean, like, I guess I don't really know, but it seems like it's a lot more accepted now, but that school was like, from what I can understand, if you were like, go and study with a girl and you ended up like having sex in high school or something along the lines of that you were, um, you were shamed, uh, by the, the, the elders, the, the, the adults, you were looked at differently. So it was very hush hush with all the uh, things that were going on. And, you know, I got caught like smoking weed and then I started drinking and partying a lot. And, um, I was like now a naughty, naughty boy. So then that was my last, <laughs> I was no longer like mainstream accepted by uh society but i did start to find like a circle of people that like allowed me to be around and i could really start to bond and develop with so i think it was about 16 17 years old where i was really able to start really coming out of my shell and uh, becoming more of who i am and i start partying more and more and more and i start failing more and more and more and more and i think i did not finish high school with a 0.7 gpa last rank in my class and I lied to my ga guidance counselor to get them to let me walk so that the, the, the principal would hand me a, d a diploma, but it was a certificate of attendance so that I could save face like that mattered. Like now that I look in hindsight, I don't care. I should have just not, you know, dropped out. Should have just, like if I know what I know now, I should have just dropped out and just started working when I was 16 or something like that or just pursued the farm because anyway, so yeah. So 18, I, you know, 18, we all graduate. It's like the most alone I've ever felt in my life because, uh, oh yeah, the feeling I was alone was because everybody else had their families and stuff and they're all taking pictures and uh, congratulating. And I was just kind of walking out on the lawn, watching everybody uh, celebrate a very important moment while I was very much so not included um, in any of the celebration. Obviously, I mean, like I had no, I didn't finish school. I had nothing to say, but I'm just saying like, it really dawned on me then that I was uh, an outsider. I was a, a loner and this, like that group of people were not my people or whatever, whatever you want to say. So it was like, it was a very, um, emotional and, uh, um, lonely experience during the graduation I had the ceremony and I was the only one in the class without a matching, uh, cap and gown. Cause I, I couldn't even. I don't know if I forgot to fill the forms out or that we couldn't afford it because we were also even more poor because we went from a little house in a suburb to a 200 acre farm and a, a seven bedroom house that was like falling apart. Like when you were pooping, you could see the pe the person below you uh, 
the holes were like the size of my face and you could watch the person below you doing laundry and it was uh they knew you were pooping that was very uh very uh not fun there anyway it was awesome i mean i miss it but it was not fun to me during the uh experience and um so i you know i graduated or graduated and then i remember walking out to get picked up by i think it was like like my parents didn't even bother to come watch it because they knew it was a sham and i think like my brother or something somebody took me home i don't remember how i got home i, I kind of remember it's barely it, this is all a blur um and i just remember going home and i was supposed to come back to the library and finish these online classes and stuff like that so i was weighing that out and decided ultimately not to because call of duty black ops one came out and i i was the best call of duty player in the whole world obviously and I was chucking C4 at people and getting uh, raged at in the final kill cams, being called a hacker because they didn't understand basic mechanics. Uh, C4 and Black Ops 1 was OP. Anyway, with Flak Jacket, sorry. Um, tangent aside. So then I really just spent that summer pursuing the one thing I knew how to do well, and that was play some motherfucking beer pong and drink some motherfucking beer and chug some motherfucking beer. Nobody, nobody can chug faster than me. Nobody in the whole world. That's one thing. Maybe I'll post in a video one day. You can ask anybody who knows me. I can slam a beer faster than like the sun sends light to the earth. Anyway, that aside, I start partying. I just party and I keep partying and I keep partying and I meet a girl and I go and I leave my mom's house because she's like, oh, a girl, you're not married. You're evil. Or I don't remember. I slept because it was it, ultimately it was just a way out and I ended up leaving and I went and I spent some time being a bum, uh, mooching, um, couch surfing, and then partying. And partying and partying and partying until ultimately I uh, knock a girl up. Uh, not my proudest moment, obviously. Uh, I try to go study with her to try to make it work for about a year when we have some complications. And then we break up, ultimately. So I'm on my friend's couch. Uh, now knowing that my life is no longer, um, what's the word? My own. I'm, re I need, I'm responsible for other life now, so I need to start getting my stuff together. So I call my mom up, and she comes down and she picks me up. And then we go back to her house, because she, she had moved from the farm to another town. And uh, I get... I'm just stuck, you know, I'm worried. Um... So I start, you know, I get a job right away. I go to Walmart. Um, I, I work at Walmart and I'm working second shift. I'm doing back room and then stocking for $8 an hour. And then I do that for a while. And then the I decided I was going to climb like the corporate ladder there because there's like a path. You know, you, you can work at Walmart and then you can get like a support manager or a department manager and then apply for an assistant management program, which like if you do pass that and get into that involves some moving around, you can start off making like 40K a year. It's pretty decent. You know what I mean? Anybody can do it. If you, I mean, if you have the aptitude, if you like pass, they set a bar and then if you, you can meet that, those expectations, they like kind of, they pave a way for you. Um, during this time too, I'm, uh, uh, I've been taking um, Adderall for a long time because you know, my mom got ADHD and I went to a psychiatrist and they said I had ADHD or whatever, but then like, I never thought nothing of it until I had tried it at a party and then it changed my life ultimately because the stars did align, you know what I mean? Um, so then I had ended up getting on a prescription and, uh, taking that for a while. Oh, sorry. Uh, and then while I was at Walmart, I was using it also like, I was like, I started to use it to my advantage because it was allowing me to outwork people. Uh, I, I, I usually outwork people on my own, but it was allowing me to go ascend to another level, essentially. Because uh, honestly, the way that it functions, it, like, it really stimulates your nervous system. So it gives you an edge in the beginning. Obviously, you've seen meth heads on the street now. But anyway, so whatever. I start like working really hard and get like super burnt out. And then I have like a... Uh, I don't know why I quit. Why did I quit? I quit Walmart for some reason. But, like, I had to stop taking that, um, the Adderall because I didn't sleep. Like, I couldn't, like, it, it wasn't like I was, like, tweaking and then, like, staying up for, like, five days in a row. It was just, like, when I would lay down and go to try to sleep, I just ended up laying there for a while. And then noticed that, like, I was only getting, like, a couple hours of REM sleep a night. And then that was just building up over time. And then it started making me, like, really unfocused and just feeling sick all the time and stuff like that. 
and triggered some psychosis. Uh, so that was a bad time in my life uh, as, as well. I couldn't really, you know, at this point too, I think my grandma was dying of dementia and we were taking care of her at our house. And a lot of things were going on at the same time. And uh, so I go home for that. We take care of my grandma until she ultimately passes away at our house. And uh, that was kind of wild too. But uh, sorry, I just, I just, there's a lot of stories here. I just don't want to like dive too far into like personal details and stuff like that. But then anyway, to move on, um, we, I meet a nice girl, you know, at Walmart. And we go for it a little. Oh yeah, right. That's why the Adderall is important because I this the psychosis event or whatever. I know like things like my thoughts and I'm like my anxiety is like through the roof and I'm like having panic attacks and stuff like that and I like a bunch of different stuff and I'm like the paranoia is going up because I'm not sleeping so then I'm like acting crazy overthinking everything and then just like letting the intrusive thoughts just like run through my brain all the time. So then uh, me and her were dating for a little bit and then I ended up breaking up with her and then. Um, just really, you know, getting through that mental health crisis era. Uh, era. And then uh, eventually me and her start talking again. And some friends of mine were talking about how this guy was interested in her. And then I was like, oh, my God, um, there's this is my only chance to be with her. And if I pass this up, I'm going to be an idiot. So then me and her get back together and we start dating or whatever. And this is around that time where I started like studying relationships and stuff like that and in my faith and all this other stuff and just really just like uh, the psychology of men and women and blah, 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 and working on my social skills and stuff like that. So then me and her start going steady and we, we leave my mom's house because she's upset with me again for some reason. So anyway, we move out and then um, moving in with our family for a little bit and we were, we're going good to together there and I get a factory job where I'm like, Working hard, really grinding. It's a hot, sweaty factory, really adjusting to it. It was about like four twelves a week. Four on, four off, though. It was pretty nice. And I started pulling in a lot more cash. So we were able to get our first apartment, and I was able to buy my first hoopty, a Nissan Maxima. Uh, I forgot what year, but the person messed the car up. It was like 200,000 miles, but they had like rolled the gauge back, rolled the gauge back to make it look like it was 150. And that was bum, a bum-ass car. But... Uh, so we move out to our first apartment. Uh, it's about five seventy-five a month. Do whatever, and we just keep grinding, keep working a little bit. But then uh, both of us end up quitting our jobs, and then going to another factory to make uh, mattresses or something. I forgot my phone. And then we did that grind for a very long time, and uh, I eventually got her pregnant, and we were going to have a son. So then we have our son, and we. Are also are at the same time our son is born. We are told we cannot renew our lease by our new landlord who had purchased our apartment building, or um, sorry, the house that we were renting out, the bottom half of the house we were renting out, and they they uh, essentially whatever booted us out, and then we were we got really lucky and found another place to live. It was like a little bit bigger, a tiny bit bigger, seven hundred fifty, and then. We were able to go there and um, have our son. Then we uh, later, a little bit later, um, we we get pregnant again and have a daughter on the way. And around that time, I uh, quit the job they were both at together because I was working really hard and we had um, they were unable to compensate me for the amount of skills I was building that I felt was uh fair pay but uh so i leave and i go to another factory which is already starting me off more making more money doing better and i was able to get promoted to one of the highest uh paid hourly positions there a machine operator there and uh operate a fancy schmancy machine and almost i think i doubled my income i over doubled my income from that last factory um uh, and just like it uh, working harder. And then around that time too, we were looking to close out on a house. We got the house and my, uh, I was making so much money, extra money in surplus that I was, my girlfriend was able to quit her job and stay at home with the kids. Cause, uh, the part-time she went to part-time after my son was born and we were really able to just 
you know, grind it out, get it, make it, make a good life for ourselves. And that brings us to here where now I'm, I'm still working that same job, making some good money and, um, we're living. Okay. Uh, I'm not like where I want to be. I'm not where I feel, um, I'm nowhere near where I want to be, but I feel like from where I've come from and how bad it was, I feel like my story is a good one. I, I, I feel like I figured out a lot of things. Uh, I have a lot of experiences that give me uh, tan uh, tangible knowledge to help people a little bit behind on me, uh, behind me on the road. Like say for instance, I'm 31 now, and the person I want to kind of reach with my channel, my uh, my my mission, I guess my my story is somebody I wish would have talked to me when I was like 16 or to 18 or 20 or 21 or 22 or 23 or 24. Um, would have just got me started faster because like the, my only regret now is not getting started faster, getting after it because I had a lot more energy in my youth. It was just kind of unguided, uh, un untapped. And like what I have, I feel like I, I feel like what I have is I was fortunate in a lot of ways, but what I have is only attainable because I felt uh, I, I, I didn't graduate high school. Uh, but like it's an alternate path for people. There's a lot of people out there that need to not go to college and or whatever or just just i don't know <laughs> don't want to get into all that i guess what i am trying to say is that going forward uh with this video and my story here and me kind of getting vulnerable like touching base a little bit about where i who i am and where i've come from uh, i hope that adds weight to a lot of the, or some of the things i decided to speak about with commentaries and stuff like that so that ultimately i can help people uh, Bring them up to my speed. I don't know. I just, I'm on the internet a lot and you, you see the news and Gen Z is this and millennials are that and everybody's upset and they, they don't think the, they think the American dream is dead and stuff like that. But from my perspective, uh, my life, uh, I, my life is nowhere near perfect, like I said, but it is uh, pretty dang good in comparison to what I see on the internet. And uh, I feel like a lot of my attitude, a lot of my methodologies, a lot of my ways I go about life. Um, put me in the position to be able to own um, my home a lot, two vehicles, uh, two kids, and support my girlfriend uh, all on like one income. But I mean, like, yeah, that being said, uh, that's before I ramble on too much longer. I just hope that uh, that story, you know, Gives, gives somebody, uh, makes it so that the audience can kind of connect to me or whatever, uh, just so people can kind of know where I'm coming from and, uh, hope to help y'all out in the future or whatever. I don't know. All right. See you later.